Genesis chapter 24. Good afternoon. Come on in. Now we got to sing some more songs for Helen. Rack them up. Let's go. Genesis 24. Appreciate everybody being here. Those of you online, God bless you. We love you. Uh, don't forget homecoming, which is, let me go my calendar here, put my book holder on, and let's see, homecoming is August 5th, 6th, and 7th, so mark your calendars, try to get here, now that all the COVID stuff is dying down. It's safe to travel. So make plans to come here. And then when you get done here, go about four hours west of here and south to get on Interstate 44, kind of following the old Route 66. Go to Branson, Missouri and have a ball down there. Did you boys have a good time on vacation? John, put the camera on him. He's eating his feet. That's not a hoggard trait. That's not a hoggard trait. I can tell you that right now. Something jumped in the gene pool. Huh? Yeah. Um, let me go through an, my calendar. I got, boy, I got a busy time coming up. Um, it is April 10th. Uh, in two weeks, we will be, nearly two weeks, we will be in Fort Wayne, Indiana, with Southwest Radio, uh, April 22nd and 23rd. On the 24th, Pastor John Uter is coming up, and um, him and his wife, he's going to preach for us Sunday morning, the 24th. Um, you pray for him. He has got a church that is asking him to try out, and um, it's out of state. And so just pray for him and pray for that, pray for that church. Amen. No, John's a good man. I love him. He's a good friend of mine. I appreciate him, his ministry. They've been so good to us over the years, Lisa and I and our church. So uh, April 24th, he'll be preaching here. And then, let's see, April 6th and, no, yeah, April 6th and 7th, we will be in Wichita, Kansas for Southwest Radio. Huh? What did I say? Yeah, May, I'm sorry. Yeah, it is May 6th and 7th. There it is. May 6th and 7th, uh, Wichita, Kansas. And then April, or no, May 31st. I'll get it right. May 31st, we are going to Norwood, Missouri. Uh, Pastor Reg Kelly at Liberty Faith Bible Church. They built an outdoor tabernacle. I like that. And they're going to hold a camp meeting there. And on the 31st, he's invited pastors from around the area. And he's asked me to come and deliver one of the messages that I do promoting the King James Bible. Uh, pray for me. I, I want to. I'm going to do everything in love, and just try to convince some of these pastors to leave these old, these new translations, these modern translations, which keep changing about every five to ten years, and stick with the King James. So just pray uh, for me on that on that day, and then let's see. 
June is camp. I think June 19th, Father's Day, usually is the time we go to camp. We'll be there all week. Uh, so pray for us there. In July, Sweetie Pie on July 10th and I celebrate 34 years together. And July 8th, 9th, and 10th is the MUFON conference, like we went to last year in Las Vegas. This one's going to be in Denver, Colorado. And um, I haven't got a, a, a speaker for that date of the, of the 17th. I don't have a preacher yet. But Brother Red said he's got several in his church, several good men that are preachers. In his church and so I think I'm going to tap into that and have him send one up for us um, and then probably Lisa and I will what did I say eight July 8th 9th and 10th where's my brain I should have took a nap today I didn't get much sleep last night July 8th 9th and 10th is the MUFON conference and on the 10th uh, we'll have to call in a preacher and then that week, probably Lisa and I will kind of take a little vacation there in the Denver area, go, go up to the Rocky Mountains. I like that kind of stuff. And then August 4th, 5th, and 6th, homecoming. And then August 19th and 20th, we are hosting Southwest Radio here at Bethel. Um, so just pray for that. I don't know who's, who's going to be speaking. I did confirm with Southwest Radio that all the speakers would use the King James. And that's what they stand on. That's the Bible they use. Noah Hutchings wouldn't use any other Bible than the King James. And uh, I love that dear man. He's now gone on to be with the Lord. And um, I, I may not agree with every speaker on every issue. Um, but we'll try it. We'll see how it goes. All right. Uh, and that's uh, August 19th and 20th, and I think that's enough calendar for now, all right? So we'd, if you live in the Fort Wayne area or you can get there, we'd love to see you. Uh, go to www.swrc.com, that's Southwest Radio's website, and you can get the location and the dates and the times and the schedule and everything like that. You can get that off their website. Uh, if you live in or around the Wichita, Kansas area, uh, come and see us uh, there in May. And if you live in the Colorado area, um, come by our table at MUFON. I haven't 100% made the plans yet to go to the MUFON. What did I, I keep saying, my, I keep getting the wrong calendar. July 8th, 9th, and 10th. Yeah, that's what it is. Denver, Colorado. So if you are in the Denver area or Colorado, come see us at the MUFON conference. All right? Now, Genesis chapter 24. We're working our way through the book of Genesis and um, learning the things that are written here. These things are important or God wouldn't have put them in the Bible. We have Abraham who the Bible says in verse 1, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in, and I like this one phrase, all things. Can you think of a verse that has the phrase all things in it? I knew you was going to say that one. I can do all things through Christ. And type that in. Go, get the Bible search software and install it on whatever computer you have. And just type in the phrase, all things. I think it's 220 times. It's a multiple of 22. Revelation. And um, Jesus said, all things have been given into my hand. And I think what that means is the book that God holds in his right hand, he's going to give to Jesus. This is the book of all things. Everything that is going to happen in the last days, I believe, is recorded in this book, in prophecy, in typology, and so on. Um, 
But the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. So Abraham could do all things through Christ. The Spirit of Christ was in him, the Bible says. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. Um, and I, I don't know exactly what that, exactly what he did or why that was such a token of making a covenant or agreement with Abraham. Um, uh, there's some things I, I, I've, I've learned over the years, but I, I don't know that I'll say it. But it has to do with the word testimony. You go from there, okay? Uh, verse 3, Abraham says to the servant's name, and we find out in another chapter is Eleazar, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites. If you remember all the way back to Genesis, um, what was it, 11? Where Ham saw his father naked. Or, yeah, Genesis 8 maybe. But he saw his father naked. Which is, God said, that's an abomination. You're not to look upon the nakedness of your father. And Shem and Japheth went in backwards with a, like a cover. And they walked backwards into his tent to cover him up. Abra uh, Noah had got drunk um, from, the, from the vineyard that he had made. He made wine and got drunk on it. When Noah, or, when Noah awakened out of his drunkenness... He remembered what Ham had done. And it's interesting that he cursed not Ham, but Canaan. Canaan was an offspring of Ham. And so he cursed Canaan. And I think that's why Canaan is always a type of the devil's kingdom. The evil angels. Because we... When we are taken up with Jesus Christ, we are going to dwell in a land that has been promised to us called heaven. Jerusalem above, it's a city. We have a mansion there waiting for us. And I love the English of the King James Bible. If you look up the etymology of the word mansion, a mansion is built in reverence and respect to someone who has a title of leadership, like a king or a duke or a prince. And the Bible says that Christ has made us kings and priests with him. We will be judging angels. We will be judging the people of this earth. And so the new translations say, in my father's house are many rooms. That's a total perversion of what Jesus meant. If he said mansions, he meant mansions. We're going to live there. Amen. So, um, Canaan represents, I believe, the one third of the fallen angels that are cast out of heaven we are going to go up into heaven and live in their place. And the picture of that is Israel going into the promised land. They already have cities built. They already have houses there. They, when they were conquered, there were some instances where God allowed them to take their sheep, take their cattle, take their gold, their clothing, whatever they wanted. And for 40 years, we know the Bible says that their shoes did not come loose, they did not tear, they were exactly the way they were when they left Egypt. I don't know about you, but I don't have a pair of shoes that old. That was an act of God, amen? So the picture here, Abraham, of course, is referring to Isaac. And he says to his servant, I don't want you getting a wife 
for my son of the heathen crowd, the Canaanites. They're cursed. They are, they and their other six nations that are in that land, Deuter according to Deuteronomy 7, seven nations greater and mightier than thou, but God is going to let them conquer all these nations. Um, so I believe that's a picture of us going into the promised land in heaven. And he said here in verse 4, verse 3, he said, Don't pick a woman of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. Verse 4, But thou shalt go unto my country. What is Abraham's country? It is the land, ultimately, it is the land of promise. It is where God told Abraham to look northward, southward, eastward, and westward. The four cardinal directions. Basically, everything. When Jesus said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth, God, Jesus wasn't kidding in that. He wasn't just making an off-the-wall statement. Because Abraham, in the situation with where Lot's servants were striving against Abraham's servants for the well waters, for the grassland, for the cattle. And Lot came to Abraham and said, the land is not big enough for both of us. And so Abraham could have said to Lot, this land is mine. You're on it because I took custody of you when your father, my brother, died. He was his nephew. Lot was his nephew. And he told him, he could have said, you go find land somewhere else. This is my land. But that's not what he said. He showed meekness. He yielded his rights over. And us Americans, we don't do that. We are very poor at yielding over what we think we have a right to. Or maybe have a right to. But we don't yield anything. It's in our nature. Our nation was started as a rebellion against King George and his tyrannical uh, opposition to America, taxing them without representation, hiring Hessian, which are German, Germanic troops, to come over and shoot American people. Just kill them. So he basically invaded his own colony of America, and the colonists said, we're not going to do that. We're not going to take that from you. We're going to be independent of you. And that started the independence war, which gave birth to our country. Uh, so he says, verse 4 again, thou shalt, But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again into the land from whence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. In other words, don't come back with him without a wife. I'm sending you out. I'm trusting you. You're taking an oath. You're putting your hand under my thigh. You're swearing an oath to me that you will go into my country of my people and pick a wife out. Again, that's a picture. Isaac represents Christ, the bridegroom. Rebecca represents us, the bride of Jesus Christ, his body, his flesh and blood. Um, when we are translated to be with Jesus forever, we will be the, what am I trying to say? The, br the bride of Jesus Christ. A and this bride, is what we're going to find out, has to be willing Okay? I don't believe John Calvin's reckoning of salvation. John Calvin basically said, man doesn't have a choice. He's incapable of making a choice to choose God and to choose to follow righteousness. He is totally corrupt. Therefore, God chooses whom he wants, and we don't get a say in it. But I don't believe that. Because the Bible is full of God's people and God saying to them, make a choice. In the Garden of Eden, you have the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And it was right there in the midst of the garden, both trees. And God said, make your choice. What are you going to follow? What are you going to, which direction are you go? 
What choice are you going to make to spend eternity in? What's the place you're going to go when you die? And so that's, that's the picture of it. That's what's going on here, is that this wife that he picks has to be willing to do this. And we're going to see that. Um, in Genesis 2.18, the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make and help meet for him. So God is promising Adam that he would give him a wife. Adam is a picture of Christ. And it was a wound in Adam's side that God brought forth the woman. He healed the wound. And God brought forth the woman to Adam. And Adam said... Uh, in verse 23, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Theref and you have crazy preachers. Um, Rick Warren is one of them. Um, Kenneth Copeland is another. Who say that God is both male and female and he, when he created Adam... He created an androgynous creature, both male and female in the same body. That's not right. God told the Israelites, gave them instructions on exactly how they should dress. And he said, a man should not wear the attire of a woman, neither should the woman wear the attire of a man. God separated the genders. You know what we haven't done? We haven't prayed yet. Father, I am very sorry for continuing in this message, Lord, uh, without calling upon you. It was presumptuous of me. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would bless the words of your word, bless the words that come out of my mouth. Help me, Father, to teach these people the truth of the word of God. Help me to do it right. Give my mind clarity of thought. And let me be a blessing to your people. I love them, and I know you love them. So, Father, give us great wisdom, profound wisdom and understanding of your word and the pictures that are drawn here for us. Jesus Christ, we look forward to the day when we meet you in the air, and so shall we ever be with you. We long for that day. We groan and moan for the new house, the new body that you're going to give us. So, Father, teach us patience. Teach us how to wait on you, wait on the Lord and trust in you. And you'll, you'll bring it through. You'll bring it to pass. We trust you and we have faith in you. We ask your blessings in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, uh, verse 24, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And by the way, even though you see many of the Bible characters, the men, who have multiple wives, when God created Adam, he only took one rib, made one woman for him, and gave that woman to him for the rest of his life, 930 years. With the same woman. That's an anniversary. <laughs> Talk about candles. Adam tried to blow him out, but the heat kept pushing him back. I made that up. No, I heard that. Somebody else made that up. Uh, verse 25, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So Isaac and Rebekah are going to be, along with Adam and Eve, they're going to be a picture of this. Probably next Sunday, if the Lord allows me, I will preach on the new name. What did Adam, what, what job did God give Adam that involved names? Every animal on the earth, every creature on the earth, he gave them a name. I think that Adam obviously is a picture of the Lord Jesus in prototype, in typology. And the Bible says that God knows the name of every angel that there is. 
And there is an inf infinite amount of angels, a never-ending number. And yet God knows them all. He probably named them. And two of the good angels that we have listed in the Bible, both of them carry God's name in their name. Gabriel. L is for Elohim. Michael. The L is for Elohim. And Michael means who is like unto God. And the answer is nobody is like our God. Amen. So here's Jesus naming all the angels. Here's Adam naming his wife and all of the animals. Adam gave Eve her name in Genesis 3. Adam called her Eve. Why did it? Because she was the mother of all living. We're going to see that in Rebecca. Genesis 24. Back to Genesis 24, verse 7. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. An angel is going to go with Eleazar, the servant, to guide him, to protect him, to ensure that Eleazar, the servant of Abraham, does exactly what Abraham is asking of him. Are not the angels of God surrounding us and guiding us through our life. I believe that. Psalm, read Psalm 91. He has given his angels charge over thee. So we are accompanied. I can't see them. But they're here. Isn't that weird? They're here. In this place. Fighting a battle. For our hearts, our minds, our families, our marriages, our children. Fighting a battle for us. Somebody, oh yeah, amen that. Um, now, verse 8. Look at what Abraham said. And if the woman will not be willing. There's the word will. Free will. Free will. If the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath. In other words, the contract ends if you find the wife and she is not willing to go with him. So the Bible teaches us two things about our salvation. The first thing is that God did choose us. We are the elect of God. He has voted for us and chosen us. But what was his choice based on? Peter said that that choice was based upon God's foreknowledge. How do you think the angel knew where to lead the servant of Abraham? God told him. God told him this angel, lead him, and I'm just kind of speculating in my mind what is happening here, but God told that angel, take him to this girl, Rebecca. Lead him there. And in the story, there's a sign that Eleazar looks for, and sure enough, she fulfills that sign. But the end of the oath is, if she's not willing, then you're free from this, from this oath that you've made. And I absolutely believe, number one, God chose us. But number two, did we not choose God? Did we not ask God and Jesus Christ to come and live in our heart and forgive us of all of our trespasses and sins? Did we not willingly say, God, I am yours. Lead me and I will follow. Amen. So, are they contradictory to each other? No, because they're both headed in the same direction. 
God's election based upon his foreknowledge that we would be saved willingly to be the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. So verse 10, uh, no, verse 9, And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master and swear to him concerning that matter. Verse 10, And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master. Why ten? What would 10 represent? Think of something that is 10 in the Bible. The Ten Commandments, the law. How did God bring you to Christ? Through the law. Because you were in condemnation under the law. And it was the law that brought you to the Lord Jesus Christ to confess your sins and he being faithful and just, he forgives your sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Somebody, oh man, amen. Yes. I looked up that put your hand under the thigh, and of course this is all the internet. It says it's like today we raise the right hand, put our hand on the Bible. Yeah. And we've done back in those days, more in a family setting, but it's more personal. Yeah. I'm going to give you a, a PG rating on this. Huh? Under the thigh meant that he swore by his loins. Okay? He swore by his loins. What is in the loins of man? Seed. What is seed? The word of God. Prophecy, the future. Okay? He, so he swore, this is just a, a guess on my part, that he swore by placing his hand under Abraham's thigh and gave his testimony, testament, the root of that word, goes along with the loins. Okay? Rated PG. Parental guidance. Okay? Now, so he takes ten camels. That represents the law. The servant took, verse 10, servant took ten camels. Verse 10. It's in verse 10. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed. For all the goods of his master were in his hand, and he arose and went to Mesopotamia, and all the goods of his master were in his hand. He's like Jesus, who takes all things in his hand. Okay? Everything that God created, Jesus owns it, because God has given it to him, and by him and through him were all things made. So the Father has given to his Son all things. Uh, Joseph is another picture of that. Jo when Joseph was in Potiphar's house, Potiphar didn't have a clue how much land he owned, how, many, how much cattle he had, how much grain he had in his reserves. He only knew the food that was before him on his table. He put everything into the hand of Joseph, and Joseph was faithful in his house. Amen! And I believe that God has given his church a certain authority in this world and put things in our hand. If you follow the scriptures and Jesus' commandment of how to deal with someone who is in the church who has committed a transgression, you go to them, if you know of it, you go to them in private, try to settle the matter. If not, then you bring a second witness. And if he won't accept that, then you bring him before the church. And if he will not repent, I saw a vehicle pull in. If he will not repent, then he is to be put out of the church of God. And God gives the church that authority to do that. And then Jesus said, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. 
And so if the man repents before the church, then the church can say, we accept your repentance, we accept you back in, we love you, and we know what this is like, and we want to keep you in God's house. It's all supposed to be done by love. Amen? And several years ago, while I was in Kenya, a situation occurred that was not dealt with by love. It was dealt with by jealousy. Those of you who are here, you remember that. So now, he goes to the city of Nahor, verse 10, verse 11. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. And what he's asking God is, God, would you please hurry up with this? Okay, let's get this done. I want to go back to my bed, all right? And I feel that way a lot of times. We're still not in our house yet. We're still not there. They're painting the walls and they've ripped up all the carpet. So they have to put new carpet in. We're waiting for some things to get done. I want my bed back. Amen. Uh, anyway, um, verse 14, he gives a sign. He said, and let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee that I may drink, and she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also, let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. There is nothing wrong with asking God to show you a specific sign. There's nothing wrong with that. So, I spent three days fasting and praying before this ministry was started. I was pastor here, but we were running a school and spent another day in fasting and prayer. And God led me to shut the school and the daycare down January of uh, December of 2008 into January of 2009. We let the daycare stay open a lot longer for, so parents could find another daycare. And um, then God gave me the idea. For the Watchman broadcast. Boom. And I already had a camera sitting in front of a green wall. You remember painting that wall? We, we took out all the little cubicles that we had for our students in our school. Me and Matthew, on the last day of school, we tore all them out. And I got a gallon of green paint. And I painted a wall back there green. It's now painted white again. But I painted a wall green. And I started doing the Watchman broadcast back there. God, God led that. God guided that. That was His will. And I prayed, God, show me what you want me to do. And God made it so evident, because when I put that first one out, I was expecting 20 or 30 people to watch it. The first weekend it was out, 500 people had seen it. It ended up on a website, a prophecy website from the Netherlands. And I was overwhelmed. I said, wow, God is in this. So there's a new Watchman broadcast coming out today. In fact, it's out now. So he asked God for a sign. Now, in verse 15, and it came to pass, before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out. The words are coming out of his mouth to God. Here comes Rebekah. Who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother of his kin, of his kind, of his family. Um, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. Neither had any man known her. Does that ring a bell with you? Behold, a virgin shall conceive. Mm. Um, and then, verse... Let's see here. 17, the servant ran to meet her. 
and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my Lord. Wow. Drink, my Lord. Mm. Um, and then she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. Exactly what Abraham or what his servant asked for. God did it while, he, while the words were coming out of his mouth. God knew what he was going to say before he said it. He knew it from the foundation of the earth. He knew what was going to come out of Eliezer's mouth. And he fulfilled it that day. Gave him the sign. And so, verse um, 20. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough. And ran again unto the well to draw water. And drew for all his camels. And the man wondering at her held his peace. To wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. And it came to pass as the camels had done drinking. That the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight. Two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold. That, these are expensive stuff. And said, whose daughter art thou? I'm, I'm trying to calculate in my mind what an, an ounce of gold right now is worth what? About fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars for one ounce. So let's say these bracelets... Each way an ounce of gold. And he gives her ten of them. So now she's got fifteen, sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars in American money, because we know that. Seventeen thousand dollars possible just by those bracelets alone, not counting the earring. Um let's see here. Two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold. And he said, I had that wrong. I said ten bracelets, but they were ten shekels weight of gold. So it's still $17,000 roughly. And said, whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which she bare unto Nahor. And Eleazar knew Nahor, the brother of Abraham. Verse 32, the man came into the house and he ungirded his camels, took their packs off of them, what they were carrying, his provisions and so on, and gave straw and provender for the camels and water to wash his feet and the men's feet that were with him. Feet washing goes all the way back to Abraham. All the way back. Yes. Yes. Good night. 2,000 bucks for an ounce of gold now. Well, that's really shot up. Um, let's see here. Verse 33, and there was set meat before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I've told my errand. And he said, speak on. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. And the Lord hath blessed my master greatly, and he has become great. And he hath given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old. And unto him hath he given all that he hath. Think about it. Isaac is Christ. All things given into his hand. Then verse 36. And Sarah, my master's wife, Bear a son, well, we read that already. Verse 37, And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell, but thou shalt go into my father's house. Look that phrase up. In my father's house are many mansions. Oh, I love, I love this Bible. For that reason... Because the English words make sense to us 
and unite different things that are found in different places in the Bible together and gives you wisdom and understanding. Don't change the words of this book ever. Amen. Um, verse 39, and I said unto my master, peradventure the woman will not follow me. Oh, well, I didn't read all that verse. Unto my father's house and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son. Verse 39, and I said unto my master, peradventure the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, The Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee and prosper thy way. And thou shalt take a wife for my son of my kindred and of my father's house. There it is again. Then shalt thou be clear from this my oath when thou comest to my kindred. And if they give not thee one, thou shalt be clear from my oath. Verse 42. And it came to pass under the well... Uh, and it came this day under the well and said, O Lord of my master Abraham, if now thou do prosper my way, which I go, behold, I stand by the well of water and it shall come to pass that when the virgin cometh forth to draw water and I say unto her, give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. Verse 44, and she said to me, both drink thou and I will also draw for thy camels. Let the same be the woman whom the Lord hath appointed out from my master's son. And before, let's see, verse 45, and before I had done speaking in my heart, there also is a teaching to us that not every prayer has to be spoken out loud. When I was being electrocuted, I could not speak. I think that my vocal cords were vibrating because I remember hearing, I think, my voice going, uh. Did you hear that? No. Matthew's the one that found me. Whew. That day is hard to think about. But I prayed in my heart, first, God have mercy on me. Because I knew I was going to die. <sighs> Secondly, before I, I felt myself starting to pass out, in my heart I said, I don't want to leave my wife and kids. Boom. God separated me from that electricity. <clears throat> you can pray in your heart all day long. Try it. Try to spend a day as you do your work, as you do whatever it is you do during the day, Try to think, to pray often to God. Mm, 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 mm. Um, I had done speaking in my heart. Behold, Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder. This is verse 45. And she went down into the well and drew water. And I said unto her, let me drink, I pray thee. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. So I drank and she made the camels drink also. And I asked her and said, whose daughter art thou? And she said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bare unto him. And I put the earring upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. Put her in handcuffs. She's got to say yes. <laughs> no. In verse 48, And I bowed down my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham. Listen, when you ask God for a sign and God fulfills it, remember to tell him thank you. Tell him thank you often for what God has done in your life. Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. And now, if you will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. 
Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceeded from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. He, they recognized that God was in this thing. And they said, it's, not, it's out of our hands. God obviously is in charge here. Um, and so, verse 51, Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. Verse 53, And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. Oh, listen, God's going to clothe us. Amen. Rebekah now is a queen if she accepts. Um, go on YouTube. And watch the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. It was done inside the Church of England. And she literally, if I remember it right, she gave consent to be God's chosen monarch for the people of England and all of their colonies and she faced north, south, east, and west and said certain words that she accepts the, the throne that's given to her. She has a choice. Even though she is the firstborn of King George, she still has a choice whether to be queen or not. And she accepted. Um... So anyway, verse, watch this, verse 54. And they did eat, drink, he and the men that were with him, and tarried all night, and they rose up in the morning, and he said, send me away unto my master. And her brother and her mother said, let the damsel abide with us a few days, at the least, how many days? There it is again. After that, she shall go. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath prospered my way, and send me away that I may go to my master. And they said, We will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. We'll ask her what her will is. And they called Rebecca and said unto her, Wilt, that's a will word, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. She had a choice. And she chose the man whose typology is to be the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It is us who, even though God has chosen us and elected us, we also have chosen to follow our Master and Savior and Lord and Husband, Jesus Christ. Whoa. Well, I'm getting riled up here. Wilt thou go with this man? She said, I will go. And they sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. Oh, you got to watch this now. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister. Be thou... What, remember what Adam said to Eve? I call her Eve because she's the mother of all living. Here, Rebecca, in a type of the church, says the same thing. Be, or they blessed Rebecca and they said this Be thou the mother of thousands of millions. God said that the seed of Abraham would be as the stars of heaven. Thousands of millions. Mm mm mm. And let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. What did Jesus tell us? Upon this rock I will build my church. And what? The gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Hell is our enemy. And our enemies will not take over us. We will possess the gates of our enemies. God will give us victory over hell and death. Amen. Um, verse 6, And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels, and followed the man. And thy servant took Rebekah and went his way. 
And Isaac came from the way of the well of Lehiroi, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. Woo! The camels are coming one of these days. Amen. God's going to send his angels to gather us up and bring us to Jesus Christ. Mm-mm-mm. And then, verse 64, Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil, covered herself. Mm. We put on Christ. We cover ourselves in his righteousness. And the servant, verse 66, the servant told Isaac all things that he, there's that phrase again, all things. And it's in verse what? How many books in the Bible? Verse 67, and Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. Our mother is what? Jerusalem above. Isaac is taking his bride to Jerusalem above. Amen. The servant told Isaac all things he had done. Isaac brought her into his, into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah and she became his wife and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. What's going to happen to the Jerusalem above? God's going to destroy it and create a better one. I can't, I can't imagine heaven now, and I certainly can't imagine the new heaven is going to be better than the old heaven. How do you get better than perfection? I don't get it. My mind cannot understand that or fathom that, but I believe it. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. This is such a beautiful picture of the Lord Jesus Christ coming after his bride and taking her to his mother's house, to his mother's tent. Whew. This is rich stuff. Amen. That's the end of verse 24, or chapter 24. I better quit. I've got more notes here, but I've got to stop. Oh, the Lord bless you this evening. Father in heaven, we rejoice, Lord, at what we've seen in your word. A beautiful picture of Jesus sending out his servants, the angels, to gather together the saints of God, both dead and alive, and bring them up to you to meet you in the air, to be the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ. We rejoice, Father, at such a beautiful picture that you have painted. We are like Rebecca. The law, the ten camels, have brought us in, in condemnation, but we have been forgiven and clothed and cloaked in Christ's righteousness. Father, we thank you for that. Bless this word in these people's hearts, I pray. Bless it in mine. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. God bless you. I'm going to eat my licorice now.